Welcome back. Before we dish out the source of the day, I would first like to introduce our guest on the show, a person who has multiple business ventures in the tech space. He also has a game center that uses to bring gamers together and he's also a very talented programmer. His name is Oguntuga Samuel Jacobs, but he's popularly known as Osmart. This video is sponsored by Kaftan TV. To watch the full video on their page, click the link in the description down below. Thank you for coming on our show, Samuel. You're welcome. So, um, without wasting any time, let's jump into the questions of the day. Okay. Um, what specialization do you dwell in when it comes to gaming? Um, I'm, a, I'm more of an adventure player. I, I love adventure games. Okay, you are not really more of like the you are not really into like the FIFA or the no, PES kind football. of. I don't like football generally. Even in life, naturally, I don't like football. Okay, but you like all these adventure games. Yeah, I love adventure. Uh, games. What, what, what I mean, what are in adventure games that you like so much? Mm, I love the one that are more taxi and comes with brainy stuff. Like you have to crack your brain. To okay, something brain like brain. Uncharted, The like Last Uncharted, of Us. Last of Us. GT stuff like okay. that. But anyhow, we are, we are going into a more deep, we are going to a deeper topic today. This okay. topic has to deal with um, um, how to set up a gaming business or how to like dive into the gaming sector in Nigeria. We know that things have been getting hard for a lot of people lately. Okay. So um, people are looking to like go into other sectors. Now entrepreneur, entrepreneur is like, entrepreneurship is the major thing is like the talk of the day now because everybody is thinking that okay what can i dive into you know people are people are not really relying on government jobs like that anymore mm -hmm, yeah, so okay. and um, when people are like diving into other sectors in and the entrepreneurial world we see them diving into the gaming sector yeah. so um when it comes to like gaming do you like sell games or do you like deal games or you own a game no, center i don't sell games i own a game center i don't sell video games but i bring in people that patronizes that play and I also have young gamers that are passionate about games that handle the business for me when I'm not around. Okay. I only have people that sell games around me. Oh, okay. Yes, so I have game dealers. Oh, okay. But do you go there to like patronize them or? Yeah, I make an order with them if I want to, when I need a game or I need a console. If someone needs a console or a customer wants to get a new okay, game, console. I make a contact with them. Okay, okay, that's nice, that's nice. So what motivated you to set up a gaming business? First of all, I have a passion for game. I love game. Okay, you love it's game. something I love, like right from small. That was something I love, even through school. Game, like, game was one of my best. But there must have been like a driving force where you'd be like, I just need to set up a gaming center. Well, actually, when I came in to the town, that was far back 2018, I I kind of have a inspiration because I thought of I saw people that wanted to play game but they had no place to go out to play games and I thought about if I had a conducive environment okay. for gamers to come together and give them that spark that okay. it would be a nice concept so I walked into it although I had few discourages back then but I walked into the idea and I built a platform them. Wow, that must have that must have taken a long time for you to have like amassed such to build something so powerful like that. So, you know, it yeah, it took a lot, it took a lot of time, a lot of resources, but by the grace of God, we're doing well right now. Well, I'm sure you are. When I came into the the city, I saw people like people needed to play game. When I spoke with people, people wanted to play games, but they they had no standard game center. Okay. They had no comfy a game center that was very comfy. Okay, okay. So I had it in the idea. Something struck me that okay, why not put it out there? A very comfortable gaming center whereby people can come in, relax, play game, interact with people too. A very comfy environment. Okay, well, that's nice. Um, so where your your game center is located? Where? At Oishimbari, new shopping complex. Okay, Oshun it's located Street, in like Oshubu. Oshubu. Yeah. Okay. So, um, what what are the thing? What what can you say that sets you apart from other people that own a game center? Like, what what can you say about your? Well, place? first, the my environment. I made it very conducive. Okay. I you know I took advantage of the 24 hours lights we have okay. over there. Then I had AC play in stores like. It's a place, it's a very conducive environment you have. When you come in, the place is very cool for you. You have your okay. air condition blowing you. And I went in for like a bigger TV screen. Okay. With like HD. So I know, okay, when you come, you know, gamers, they love 
having a very yeah, comfortable you, screen. Yeah, they want to see, the want to see quality. The quality. So I went for a very quality screen. Okay. Then the conducive environment too. Okay. So and it's a, the very place I went by when you are gaming or you're playing, you know you're in a different world. You're conducive yeah. and you're oh, So you're there. saying so you're telling me that if I were to if I were to go there right now that I would, I would all my so all my worries will, will leave. Yes, that's very true because immediately you step in you you're very like you're, in, you're entirely in a different world. Oh, okay, okay. I think I'll take your word for it. So, <laughs> so from the experiences you've been able to gather over the years, how mm -hmm. can you advise someone that wants to set up a game center? Like, how can you advise someone that wants to set up a game center or wants to dive into the gaming sector? Well, I'll tell them, first of all, you need to invest in a rich capital. And why taking the risk? You shouldn't be afraid of it. You just need to take the risks okay. and break through that barrier. Yeah. You know, a lot of people contemplate, am I going to make a lot of money from that business and stuff like that. But if you want to go into there, first of all, you must have passion for it. And you must keep on investing to make it grow. Okay. Like currently now, we are looking into having this um, 3D visual, these 3D games, what they call it. Okay, um, 3D and VR, virtual VR, reality. Exactly, this virtual reality guy. So we're okay. looking into bringing it into our game center. Okay. The so, new PS5. So that's a new investment. Okay, that's a new, you're like, you're looking to, um, you're you already building up incentives, like, right from the get-go. And um, So, but have you, you've tried the um, virtual reality before? Have you yeah, tried played it? it. It's a very nice, it's a very nice Okay, game. it messes the player into another world entirely. Yes, you know, when you put on the glasses and you're with the, uh, the okay, controller, controllers. you are into a different reality, you're in a different environment. Okay. So it's like, it's you playing the game yourself. Okay. Let's imagine you're playing an adventure game and while you're with it, you're like, you're the one driving okay. the car. It's puts you in the driver's seat and everything. You're, not, you're the one, like, you're in the environment of the game. Like, let's say, okay, you just, let's say, as we are now, we uh, in a few minutes we just we moved from this environment and we're in a new environment yeah, entirely. Okay. The messes um, the exactly. player exactly whereby so. you are the one playing like that character of the, of the game they are playing. You be the one, uh, you be the character and you be the one playing it. Wow, <gasps> wow that, that's like that's like really spectacular. I mean, it must really like it must really be mind blowing to people who have not even been into gaming at yeah, all. Yeah, very, very. I, I mean, if people, if people have, I mean, for somebody like a total noob, like somebody that has not played video games before, if we were to be able to like um, step into the VR um, cosmos or step into the virtual reality cosmos, I feel like he will be able to. Um, it, the experience would be like top notch. You even be like, why, are, why haven't I like dived into this before? Yes, and that's that. You know, that's the actual. That was actually the point about gaming. Okay. Whereby you must be spectacular. You must be able to catch your audience yeah. attention. Yeah. So that okay. So those are like the key. So basically, so the key concepts of um, video gaming or setting up a business is to be able to capture your audience yes. you must not you must it's almost like as if you must not let them leave the seats yes. the, only, the only the only thing that must probably let them leave the seats is the cash they are going to spend exactly. <laughs> because you literally we have we have a lot of people having video games at home the yeah. playstation yeah. and stuff like that so you must be able to give them what that okay you must be able to convince them that me leaving my home would be a waste yeah i can actually as well just sit at my home and play my fifa and stuff like that but I must be able to tell you that you must be able to convince that okay, you leaving your home, leaving your um, your PlayStation you have at home to come play at my gaming center. It's different. It's a different. Yeah, it's a different entirely. ball game entirely. Well, for me, uh, the number one advice I'm going to say, like the person is going to have a lot of patience because when you first start, that's going to be the the most driver time of for you. Okay. You starting up, okay. you coming out. Like it's going to be the hardest this time, time because. First of all, you have to bring it to the people. You have to fish out the people out uh, because the gamers, people like people that game, gamers actually aren't really supported by the society. So yeah. they see it as a waste of time. So you have to do an extra work to okay. make sure parents sit okay. This is the thing you have right. their kids can come in and relax from a day, from a long stress or mm -hmm. use it to calm themselves or sit as a refreshing idea. So it's, you have to do a lot of work to bring them together. Yeah, but I, I, I've been, we've been seeing, we talked about it in a previous episode whereby 
we were talking about um, gaming versus parents. So is there a way you feel like you can be able to convince parents to be able to bring um, their children into your own tech space, into your gaming environment, well, since it's going to be fun for them? Yeah, like most parents have encountered, I kind of try to explain to them that their children playing games aren't a waste of time, that it's a boot to their self-confidence and it's also bringing this, how would I put it, like this communication between them and their peers like when we see going abroad, we see like Nigeria is just way back in gaming sector. But when we go abroad, we see people earning a lot of money yeah. from gaming. Yeah. You see that it's also a type of venture. It's also another type of venture that people gain in money from. Even people are even going into schools, treating it as a course. People are going to yeah. like treating it as a profession. As an but entrepreneur. Exactly. But coming down to Nigeria, because we are way back in things and stuff, like, that's why we still have that concept that gaming is a waste of time but it's i think it's it lies on our hands it's something we have to work in to show the parents that no this is not a waste of time mm -hmm. this is also a big 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 opportunity for our kids and our young ones coming in for the young generations so this is the next question i'll be asking you okay. I've, i'm sure i've already been able to learn a thing or two from what you have just said you've already okay. given me words of wisdom and i will surely apply it but this is the next question i'll ask you have you received discrimination from taking the part of the gaming sector? Mm, yeah, that was when I first of all started. People saw it as a waste of for To me, discrimination, I never looked about it because I'm a kind of person that I'm a go-getter. When I want to go do something, as long as I've concluded on my mind that I want to get this, no matter what comes up, I don't actually look about it. I just go straight for what I want. I don't look about things, the side views about People talking the side about talks, the side talks know. and stuff. I, I don't look about that. I just okay. I want to get this. All that's in my mind is okay. What am I? What and what can I do to get this? What and what can I do to achieve this? That's what I come up in my mind. So I'm all fused with ideas to achieve my goals. So I don't actually pay much attention to what people say. Yeah. That's a very, very that's a very nice trait and value to have because in this world, if you don't have if you don't <laughs> have a resilient um, character or if you are not resilient enough, people can just ping pong you everywhere. Yes, so you have to be. yeah, exactly. So people can just ping pong people everywhere. So I, I yeah, feel you like you have to be confident about what you want to achieve. And Osho knows that. And once again, you have to also know that no matter what you want to do in life, there will always be barriers. So. Number one is for you to fight off that barrier. You have to break through those barriers to achieve anything you want to achieve. So what are the opportunities you've been able to grasp or enjoy from just like having people come over the shop uh, to play games and so on? Like what are the benefits you've been able to get from just having a game center? Yeah, meeting people, like I meet a lot of people. I see a lot of people's ideas that when they come over to play, they share a lot of ideas with me. We hang around, we laugh. So I would say like, the most important thing about having a game show is meeting people and interacting with different people, interacting with different strangers entirely that you haven't seen before, you, have, you don't even know they exist. So they come in, they bring in their own, like, ideas. You know, their own ideas and their own way of viewing things, like their own way of, their new aspect of viewing things. So you, you get to see a lot of things differently uh, every you day. Get, you get to learn from people how they live. It's, it's just exactly. like when people go to a bar, they go and meet a bartender. I mean, what a bar like how a bartender is to those he attends to. You know, I, exactly. we hear we hear stories about like okay, I'm 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 dive, I mean I'm, I'm digressing from the gaming <laughs> um, sector now. We're going into something deeper. We see yes. okay, a bartender a, a bartender learns to know, for, I guess to um, acquire a lot of knowledge just from people like you know having sitting down around the bar. Having to, they, they, you see, they see through people's emotions. So it's, al so it's also like that in the gaming sector. You get to yes, see how people you feel. You get to see a lot of people, different people share a lot of ideas with you. And also people come to share about, people talk about what they are going at home, the discrimination they face and things like that. So it's, it's a big eye opener. And you get to see a lot of things too. So um, what is your message to the people who want to set up a gaming business? around gaming or they just want to just like use gaming as an entrepreneurial skill well i'll tell them that at the start it isn't going it isn't going to be very easy and even while starting and still while you're going on the business and stuff you don't have to just give up because there will be a lot of stuffs coming in a lot and currently we know our economy is in
going well okay, so isn't that great? the cost of things and everything but you should just look past that okay but yeah you should. and again going into having a gaming center it should be a thing of passion it shouldn't just be for business idea because okay. at the point of time you might have some slack in sales and stuff like yeah, that yeah. so but when you have passion for it you look beyond that yeah. you invest because i won't tell you like you have to invest a lot of funds because you see a lot of people, you like the pad, the control, like the consoles. Yeah. There'll be a lot of time when it will get spoiled yeah, and stuff get that. Yeah, exactly. And you you get faulty. I need to change. And we all know with the economy we are going through now, like since, those consoles are not cheap. High. Like are cheap. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Things are yeah, very I expensive know, they now. Are cheap. They are very, very costly. So you just have to make that sacrifice. Like you should be willing to make a lot of sacrifices for. Uh, you should be willing. You should be willing to make a lot of sacrifices for the things you love. Yes, mm -hmm. and. Also, you know, you have to keep on changing your games. Like, you know, each year you have to change your PS and stuff like that. You know, when they have customers will be asking for, okay, we want to play PS22, FIFA 2022, you need new games and stuff like that. And all these games and yeah, they are not yeah, easy to come by. Exactly. You need you need to you need to drop some money. You need to drop some do for you need, to, you need to invest a lot of it. And that's like this business is something you need to keep on investing on. Exactly. So um, you just mentioned um, the qualities one who, one who has a game center should have. You said um, the one of the qualities they should have is to be able to be very unique. They yes. should be able to they should have um, this value of conviction in which they can be able to like sell people in order to like come over to their place. Yes. So um, apart from conviction and um, and being unique and being original, what other qualities do you feel somebody of your caliber should have if somebody were to venture into it? You must be able to meet with the emotions of your of the people you're selling to. Okay. Because that's the biggest drive. You must be able to meet with them. When I mean meet with the emotions, like the way you interact with them, you must be able to give them their own respect too. You okay. shouldn't treat them anyhow. Okay, because they are coming over to play, then you should now make them feel you should not make them feel good because of they are using your tools or exactly. Anything. You should be able to make them feel at home. So but what about those people that um, they come into the shop and they disrespect those boundaries that you've set in place in your shop? Like maybe they come over and they decide they decide just to like um, vandalize the properties you've um, invested in or you've worked for through the years. Hey, you might have that, but you have to talk to them politely and if they don't listen to you, you walk them out. No. So when you give them that the first time, when you when you see that when they have that, okay, this place I can't misbehave here. If I'm doing misbehave, even with the money I'm paying, I'm being worked out or I'm being asked to leave. They will be able to respect themselves the next time they are coming in. Wow, it seems like you've had an experience before. Would you like to share that with us? Yeah, I've had a few experiences where yeah, a customer came in and he wants to stage a fight because of the game he was playing. I think, okay, they came in, he was too, he came in with a friend and I think the friend was beating him. They were playing FIFA and okay. the friend was the one winning and stuff like that. And it got to a point he wanted to be aggressive and stuff like that. So I had to like walk up to him and tell him, please, we don't call do there. We don't, don't call do these violence, acts here. Uh, so when he wanted to get out, I had to ask the, the both of them to leave. Yeah, that must have been sad for them. But because I know that people will really hate losing. A lot, a couple of people really hate losing when it comes to gaming. But I feel like what you did was the right thing because um, it's. If, assuming you hadn't like done something at that point in time, it might have. Um, it might have like evolved into something very, true. very dramatic. Uh, so, like, what are the opportunities? Um, you've been able to grasp or enjoy just from having people come over, you know, the benefits you've been able to... Mm, yeah, you know, I've been able to meet a lot of people that come in and ask about, okay, what other things do I do? And also ask me a lot of things about, so I've been able to meet a lot of different new people. Okay, you've been um, able to meet people, people of like, what, what kind of caliber, like, is it like various or like most of them are, dr most of them are like into like a particular... Various uh, sectors of people. Mostly like, students. Not or only students, I've even met um, elderly people that are into different okay, kinds of stuff. stuff. Like, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. well, that's, that's very, that's very encouraging. So what kept you going during um, the hard times? Like when probably there's no money coming in, maybe um, it could be economically, emotionally, financially, maybe you're down or something. What kept you going? Well, for me, like I said, like I'm into different kinds of things and why I'm having a game show is one is because of my passion and also it helps me cool off when I'm going through a lot of stress and stuff like that. Yeah. 
So actually for me, I don't actually look up to it 100% for the money stuff for me. It's about the passion. So even when I don't have a lot of people patronizing me, okay. I play the games myself. Most times I might be coding and having a stress going through a lot, like having a stress yeah, passing okay, through having a, a stressful time, yeah, yeah, coding, or maybe I'm having an issue with my script and I just need to relieve okay, myself. You need to cool off. Yeah, I might just go out, grab a food or a bunch of snacks and just come to my... You just play, play Grand games, Theft Auto yeah, 5. Yeah. I just play for like hours, go home, sleep, then the next day I go back to my coding. So, uh, yeah, okay, you do that, you, okay, you game. When, I mean, when, when you're um, in moments of like, whereby you need to like um, get your stuff together exactly. you just go I and like a place where I get away from from things. from things so that I, or it gives you th enough time to think yeah also why playing the games why I love adventure games it makes you think makes you crack your brain like most I have an I had an account uh, there was a time I was coding a, a site for a person and there was this algorithm I was trying to break through mm -hmm. and it was very difficult for me so while I was I took a day I took a time off and I was playing the game so while I was trying to pass a stage in the game like I started encountering different like different tricks on my wording on my hair like the codes okay. were like coming back were coming in just on autopilot exactly. just moving <laughs> exactly. straight to the point so that's why I love adventure games okay. it makes me think it makes me crack Brain. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm able to solve problems Easy. by breaking through the and and being and games. being into that gaming space that you've already created, it makes it very easy for you to be um, to be able to deduce one or two things. You know, exactly. you come up with quick and logical decisions because all those exactly. games. Um, I, I played the la I'm currently playing The Last of Us Two, so I've, I've, I'm getting more or less used to that space. You know, they tend to rack my head. Yeah, tend to like The Last of Us Two. Now you said you're just playing. You're playing it. Like yes, you see I that know. there are like the different stages, like different stages you come across yeah. at the game. You see, they have a different logic and they have a different idea. Yeah. There are some where you have to look for a way to kill the zombies and yeah, the stuff like clickers. that, the, mm, the clickers and yeah. stuff like that. There are the places where okay, you have to dodge, you have to. There's a time where you have to be quiet and you have to move mm, and you have yes, to. You have so to you know tactical. all those logics and all those things, putting them all together. Okay. When you are going through different stuff, you you make it makes you see some the things, things in a thing. different light. Oh, okay, well I've been able to learn like a couple of things, a lot of things, not just a few things, a lot. So, um, what is your message to the people who want to set up a gaming center or just want to dive into the um, gaming sector in as a well, means of like being an entrepreneur? I've told them they should go for their passion and they should buy the, buying their audience. Wow. That is nice. So wow, I must say I must um, I was able to pick a thing or two from um, from what you were able to say. And for those of our viewers at home, he or for those of our viewers who got carried away, or for those of our viewers at home, he said stuff about um, being being in a gaming environment helps to cool off stress, and it also helps to um, bring in people, and it also helps people to like um, know their weaknesses just from engaging or communicating with people, or just being in a gaming sector as a whole. I know we have a lot to discuss, but time isn't on our side right now because up next is the trivia. Stay tuned.